Star Wars games come in all shapes and sizes. From Souls-like and role-playing games to massive multiplayer shooters like Battlefront. But before we got those games, the majority of Star Wars titles were either platformers on consoles or space battle simulators. Then came the series I'm talking about today. Star Wars' first foray into the first-person shooter genre, with the second title of the series becoming one of the most influential Star Wars games in history by making the Force yet another weapon or tool in the player's arsenal and allowing them to customize things to create their own Jedi, good or evil, even with defined plot and characters. So sit back, grab a drink at the cantina, and let me tell you everything you need to know about Dark Forces, also known as Star Wars Jedi Knight. One of the more interesting aspects of the release of the original Doom by id Software is the sheer number of Doom modifications, or simply Doom mods, which altered everything from the weapons and enemies to entire maps, with a famous one being a mod that set Doom in the home of the X-Men. Seeking to bring the first-person shooter genre to the Star Wars universe and inspired by a Doom mod that placed the player in the Death Star, LucasArts began its development of Dark Forces. Though, given that the company up until then had primarily been developers of adventure games, they sought to combine both genres, which is why Dark Forces and every other game in the series includes puzzle elements, from figuring out a way to open doors, to finding switches that alter environments and open new paths. And speaking of new paths, Dark Forces uses a completely new engine, the Jedi Engine, built from the ground up, which allowed players to perform a number of athletic abilities that were pretty much uncommon for the genre at the time, though these days are pretty much the norm, such as ducking, jumping, and swimming. Not only that, but the engine, though it wasn't a true 3D engine, allowed for free look and free movement in three dimensions, with levels designed to have multiple levels, with rooms stacked on top of one another. Something that in the aforementioned Doom was not possible, as the maps were laid out two-dimensionally. Lastly, Dark Forces engine had a bunch of atmospheric elements, from fog and haze, to fully animated elements in the background, as developers wanted the levels to feel alive, to be active environments, with ships moving about in the sky above, rivers running freely, and conveyor belts doing their job. Dark Forces was a success, but there was one complaint, the lack of a lightsaber or force powers. Not that it made sense in the context of the game, but fans will be fans. So a sequel was commissioned, one where Kyle became a Jedi and used weapons, powers, and the lightsaber. Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight had its own engine, the Sith engine, which was now a full 3D engine. And the game itself used full motion video for its cutscenes, with real life actors performing the different scenes. Jedi Knight had the honor of being the first time lightsabers had been filmed against green screen since the original trilogy, and the developers who worked close with the staff at Skywalker Ranch. Jedi Knight proved not only to be a success, but it blew its predecessor out of the water, and to this day is considered by far the superior title to its sequels. The game itself also had an expansion called Mysteries of the Sith, which put Kyle in more of a supporting role and gave the starting role to Expanded Universe character Mara Jade. Two other games were released in the Jedi Knight series, these developed by another company, Raven Entertainment, and using the Quake 3 Arena engine. Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, and Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, which was the last title of the series with all other stories involving the characters being then told across novels and other expanded universe media. It's worth noting that since Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilms and LucasArts, the stories in these games are no longer canon, but the titles themselves have continued to be ported and remastered in high definition, such as the Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy ports to the Switch and PS4, and most recently, Dark Forces Remastered by Night Dive Studios and available on Steam. The story of the Jedi Knight series takes place across the entirety of the original trilogy and beyond. Originally, the start of Dark Forces was to be Luke Skywalker, but the development team realized it would have imposed limitations to the stories they could tell. So in the end, they created Kyle Katarn. The original Dark Forces begins before Episode 4, A New Hope, with Kyle, being hired by the Rebel Alliance to steal the plan for the Death Star. Yeah, that's right. In the original continuity, there was no Rogue One mission. That goal was attained by our lone infiltrator, Kyle, blasting his way through an Imperial base and obtaining those critical plans. 
A year later, in between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, Kyle's hired once more. A rebel base has been decimated, and rebel soldiers claim was done by a trooper unlike anything they'd ever seen. So Mon Mothma requests Kyle investigate, and along the way he uncovers a new Imperial project, the Dark Trooper. And if Dark Troopers sound familiar to you, it's because they've now been brought back to canon in The Mandalorian as Moff Gideon's secret project. And they're even identical to the Phase 3 Troopers found in the game. But that's not the only reference to Kyle's adventures that we have in modern media. The main character of Andor carries a Briar pistol, which was Kyle's signature weapon. In Dark Forces, Kyle is very much gruff mercenary dude with very little in the way of personality or unique look. That aspect wouldn't get fleshed out until the sequel, Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight. One year after the fall of the Empire and Return of the Jedi, four years after the previous game, Kyle's on the hunt for the Imperials responsible for his father's death. Learning that the killer is none other than former Imperial Inquisitor Jarek, a mirror Luca, a species of blind humanoids that can see through the Force. Jarek captured an old Jedi Master, Kuran, and from him learned that Morgan Katarn, Kyle's father, had a map to the fabled Valley of the Jedi, where once a terrible battle between light and dark took place, and as a result of which the place is supercharged with force energy, the spirits of the warriors from both sides still lingering. It's a hidden place and incredibly cursed, but Jarek sees it as a path to godlike power. Kyle pursues his father's killer, and in his family home sees a message from his father, who explains everything that's going on and presents Kyle with a lightsaber belonging to Ron. From that moment on, Kyle starts on the path to the Force, becoming something of a self-taught Jedi. In the expansion Mysteries of the Sith, set five years after Jedi Knight, Kyle has become a Jedi Master and has taken Mara Jade as his apprentice. Mara was once the Emperor's Hand, a secret agent working directly under Palpatine. But through various expanded universe stories, she turns a new leaf and eventually becomes Luke's partner, which is why most people know her as Mara Jade Skywalker. But in this story, she's still somewhat new to the Jedi ways, having just recently renounced the dark side of the Force. Kyle heads to a solo mission to investigate some Sith ruins, leaving Mara Jade to continue practicing and helping the Republic with various missions. But when all contact with Kyle is lost, Mara is on the case to find her missing master. Jedi Outcast, the second game in the series, takes place two years later, now about 12 years after the events of Return of the Jedi, and Kyle and his partner Jan Ors are completing missions for the New Republic, with Kyle now back to just a regular soldier, having cut his connection to the Force due to the experiences he had in Mysteries of the Sith. But when a new threat, the Dark Jedi the Sun, both kidnaps and then apparently kills Jan, a vengeful Kyle goes to the Valley of the Jedi and uses this mystic font to rekindle his powers, to recover his skills as fast as he can to confront and defeat the sun, crossing paths and even having a few missions with Luke Skywalker, who had been holding on to Kyle's lightsaber for him in his academy on Yavin 4. The last game of the series is Jedi Academy, and this one doesn't start Kyle, but instead Jaden Kor. Who's Jaden, you ask? A character they created just for this game. Much like Kyle was created for the original Dark Forces. You see, by this point, the developers realized that Kyle was too powerful. So the game would not have been much of a challenge with a character with a full set of Force powers. So in comes Jaden, a character you can customize in terms of gender and appearance, with a few different species available. Jaden is a new student to Luke's Academy, and Kyle is his master and together they have to deal with a cult dedicated long-lost Sith Lord, Marco Ragnos. Let's get a simple one out of the way, the games are damn fun, and truly put the test of theory that Stormtroopers have bad aim. They don't, at least not here. What they are for sure though is cannon fodder. And there is something truly special in Jedi Knight's FMV cutscenes, how good they are. I'm not gonna lie and say the performances are top of the line, there are some dodgy ones, but the main cast? Jarek and Kyle are really good. Jarek eats the scenery every chance he gets. And even beyond this game, the voice acting is consistently solid. Music in Star Wars Jedi Knight is unapologetically derivative. It's 99% remixes of John Williams' score for the different movies. Which means, by sheer fortune and accident, the soundtrack is awesome. 
Jedi Knight and its sequels are mind-blowing in terms of the freedom they give you, in terms of how you approach every situation between weapons and force powers. It's up to you to decide how you deal with whatever's in your path. You're never forced to play in a single way. You want to have a final climatic sword and power duel with Jarek and the Sand? That's fine. You want to cheese the hell out of them by stacking mines and luring them in? You can do that too. The Jedi Knight games made it so fun to be a space wizard, especially one with zero qualms about using thermal detonators along with a lightsaber. As for the force abilities, you don't only have the classics like push, pull, choke, and lightning and mind trick, but outrageous ones like force destruction, which is essentially a D&D fireball. And of course, force heal. The Jedi Knight games are, if I'm not mistaken, some of the first video games to include the movement-based force powers, force speed, and force jump, both of which can be used to sequence break and just outright break the game. Not to mention doing some really cool things like just blazing through a battlefield at Mach 2 while slicing everything in your path. Again, the Jedi Knight games are all about being the coolest space wizard you can be. But it's not just the freedom of approach that you have with the Jedi Knight games. There's also tons of replayability. From different playthroughs with different force loadouts, to light side and dark side ending in both Jedi Knight and Jedi Academy, to Jedi Knight having multiple secrets per level that if you find them all, they give you an extra point to spend on your force powers. Which of course means there is a possibility of doing a min-max run of Jedi Knight, finding every secret and maxing out every power as much as possible. Lightsaber combat in Jedi Knight and sequels, I won't say are perfect, they're kind of janky at times, but they're still really fun. Hell, Jedi Knight has such a variety of encounters. Jedi Outcast and Academy have recurring force-using enemies. They're fun, they're interesting, but they're a normal part of the gameplay. For Jedi Knight, the original and one of the reasons it's considered the best in the series, your duels are against other Dark Jedi. They are boss fights. And each and every one of them is a completely different experience. Hell, one of them is a tub of bridge against a dark Jedi that hovers because he's lost his legs. And it's kind of like a joust. You just run at one another, hitting each other and running back. It's phenomenal. There's even a two-on-one fight with a big guy and a little guy who are called the Brothers of the Sith. Each of these encounters is a completely new experience and a memorable one at that. Kyle is a great character, and even years after he was last seen in one of the many Expanded Universe novels, he still remains something of a fan favorite. In Star Wars overall, Jedi are often portrayed as being almost above everything. Always calm, collected, and wise, Kyle is not. He's just a guy dealing with matters of life-changing powers and situations. He's not infallible, he fails fairly often, makes many mistakes, is often driven by his emotions, but the most important thing, he learns. He grows, and by the time you reach Jedi Academy, he's not only a powerful Jedi Master teaching the new generation of space wizards, but is someone who's been through it all, with or without powers, and has a distinct perspective that is invaluable to the new Jedi. This is a guy who throughout the games is wracked with guilt, self-doubt, and self-loathing. Kyle is a complex character. He is the first character, I think, in the entirety of Star Wars to tell Jedi apprentices that at the end of the day, Force abilities are just tools. There is no distinction between light side and dark side powers. What matters is the intent behind them. If you're tired of the way Jedi are consistently portrayed, Kyle's perspective will be refreshing, I assure you. There's a reason a good chunk of the fandom is still hoping he'll make it back into canon someday. We could use Kyle back in the Star Wars canon. Hell, we could use a whole new Jedi Knight game. This is nothing against Cal Kestis and the Jedi survival titles, but Kyle is a special kind of space wizard. Curiously, the developers of Jedi Survivor put out a job posting recently for developers looking to work on a game that is inspired by dark forces. Not saying we're not getting a new Jedi Knight and maybe Kyle, I'm just not not saying that either. I'm mostly just coping. I really want a new Jedi Knight. And speaking of characters, again, I mentioned Mara Jade before, but that's not the only character that Kyle and Jaden cross paths with. Luke is one of them, Lando, even Chewie and Boba Fett. 
Better yet, and this is something I consider truly special, when an NPC is with you as a companion, they pull their own weight. They can handle business. Let's face it, in current gen games, companion AI is dodgy at best. To a 20 plus year old game, doing it well is simply outstanding. I'm not saying they're perfect, but I'm saying they're useful. As I mentioned, Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy are available on Switch and PlayStation 4, and Night Dive Games have remastered Dark Forces for PC, with the game now available on Steam. With that said, however, Jedi Knight, Mysteries of the Sith, and even Outcast and Academy may be difficult to play on modern PCs. But fortunately, there are a bunch of great mods for all these games that are not only better texturing, but also plenty of visual system and control updates. Much like I did with the Legacy of Kane games, to make it easier for you, I'm going to put the links to a lot of these mods in the description below. I can only hope that leads you to the best decision you can make and give these games a try. They deserve it. And that's it for me. See you on the next one and may the force be with you.